What's up, guys? I'm Chris, and welcome to V Experiences. So the the main topic here is going to be quick because you know it's something I've talked about a whole bunch of times, but something that keeps coming up in questions. So I want to have a direct searchable video that's going to have it in the title, so I was like, hey, you can go find this, right? And that is the whole question of oil squirters. Now, the last question came up from somebody who just recently messaged me about a, a, K, a K20 build for his car. And he was talking about the K20 and which one's more important because of the uh, oil squirters. Now, if this guy had taken the time to go through my playlist that has K-Series videos in there, there's a K20 video that has a block comparison. And it tells the differences in it. And in the differences in that video, it says how important the oil squirters are. They're not fucking important. Now, for those of you that have watched and paid attention over the time, uh, I have said multiple times over the past years that oil squirters are not important. They're not important at all. Uh, there's, in fact, so little importance to them that a majority of the people who actually build really high horsepower engines or high revving or horsepower or high revving engines delete them. Uh, why? Because uh, for a super powered engine, um, it was hard to just fucking believe as it could be as it is. Uh, the difference in temperature between the oil that's coming up from the block versus what's getting you know versus the pistons is dramatic enough to where the oil squirters have actually popped pistons because of the difference in temperature. They crack the pistons, right? So, um, yeah, they're not important at all. So for people who keep asking me, oh, my God, oil squirters, you know, it's so important. They're not. They're not fucking important. You don't fucking need them, all right? So that's it. Now to move on because this is a fucking minute. It's a two-minute video if I, don't, if I just leave it like this. Got to make it a little longer. Plus, there's things I want to talk about. And those things I want to talk about would probably be ignored if I hadn't made this fucking video. So... Now you get to listen to it. So if you're watching this shit sometime in the future, you look at the, the age of this video and it's like a year old, you can just skip from here because that's it. I'm done talking about it. Now, so the rest of this shit, um, yeah, so I got my uh, my RBB K24 bolts in the fucking mail. They're not fucking RBBs. They're goddamn, uh, they're K24 A3 fuck, or A4 fucking bolts. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's greatly disappointing because I, I was excited. I was like, fuck yeah, they're out for delivery. I can finish the single cam block, you know, get the head gasket, put that on there, take the engine off, you know, or take the engine block off, put the K24, put drop pistons rods in, you know, get that fucking block done. And then, you know, the, K, the K20 is at the, uh, at the machine shop getting the overbore. So I thought, I thought I was gonna have boom, boom, boom engines done, but now it's not. That's not the case because I'm I'm missing a fucking you know the bolt still for the K24. I'm still gonna have the single cam and the in the K20 done soon, hopefully, but um, it's just um, the K24 is not gonna be done. So I thought we were gonna be real productive there, and that's not the case. Um, I was gonna say, uh, I, I guess I'm just gonna have to fucking bite the bullet. And I'm either gonna have to go on eBay and spend thirty, forty dollars on buying a fucking actual RBB rod with the bolts and shit, or go to fucking Honda, which is like twenty dollars a bolt. You know, I'm not, I'm not paying forty dollars for two bolts. That's just fucking ridiculous. Not gonna happen. So uh, I'm probably just gonna have to buy a used rod off eBay, suck it up, and fucking eat the loss. I guess I'll just have one extra fucking random rod laying around in my stash. Uh, you know, who knows? I could always get lucky in, in the time between I decided to buy the rod or whatnot. It could come up. I, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait a week. I'm gonna wait a week. I'm gonna keep poking around on Facebook. I'm gonna post around, poke around eBay. Unless I can find one under thirty dollars on eBay, then I'll buy that. But um, I've tried asking the audience. It seems like none of you guys have one available to sell to me or bolts available to sell. So that's that's kind of shitty. That sucks. But whatever. Also, I guess. Um, oh yeah, another thing I want to talk about was you know engine cleaning. I just went on IGTV and was like, guys, you know, I can't, I can't beat the hot tank. You know, it's gonna take forever to clean the block, and the hot tank always wins. Well, <laughs> so the last time, the last time I really tried to do deep cleaning on a block, there was there was two differences from compared to what I did the other day. Um, three, one, fucking motivation, money, the two M's, the two big M's, the one M that follows into the other. Money equals motivation, right? When I went to the engine shop. And they're like, nah, we can't do this because it's too dirty. I'm gonna get contaminants in the in the honey tank. And he's, I'm like, fuck me, fuck you, bro. You didn't tell me that I was gonna have to fucking uh, that clean cleanliness was gonna be an issue because I wouldn't have brought it. I would have waited because eighty five dollars is a lot of money for me to just go home and you know attempt to make a cleaning. So back into the trunk and went, took it with me back home. And uh, then this is when the two other things come into, into play. One, oven cleaner. <laughs> And do uh, a water hose. 
Well, I have used the water hose before, but it's been years since I've done it. So uh, this is the first time in a long time I've gone back to the water hose method. <laughs> and the other thing is that was different too is uh, uh, okay, yeah, they just got my message on eBay for me saying, hey, these aren't the right fucking bolts. So uh, the other thing was the oven cleaner. The oven cleaner apparently works much better than the degreaser does. Degreaser never really seemed to work, and when I as well as this did now. And when I left degreaser soaking on the engine, now you have my nightmare story where it you know, fucking did nasty shit to the metal, and I had to do all kinds of repair to clean it up. So the oven cleaner, oven cleaner plus 15 minutes plus water hose and some hand scrubbing equals a very very fucking clean engine block, very clean. Now there, I can still say. I'm not as good as the, as the hot tank because I've seen a block that's been hot tanked and it is 100% clean. There ain't no shit left over, right? Uh, now, there are still small deposits left over, but they're very small, very hard packed, and in the in the deep crevices, right? So, as far as cleaning the outside of the block and whatnot, you can go to Instagram and see the pictures I had there. Uh, as far as cleaning the outside of the block and line shit, it did really good. As as a fact that when it comes to the time to paint this this K20, I think it's gonna do much better than than the shit I've done over the last couple of years. Simply because of the fact that there's not gonna it's not gonna be any spots for the dirt to you know to be uh, caked up to where to crumble off. Now the paint's still gonna be the same most likely. Where I mean, unless I do coats and coats and coats of it, it still can be rubbed off the block. But um, it is as clean as it's gonna get. Besides being in a hot tank. Now the other places that the hot tank cleans better than where what I was cleaning is at the um, inside the oil passages. Like you'll see, like in in the place where you can get a finger in some of these oil passages and clean out some of the shit on the surface area, but you can't get deep down inside. And the hot tank, of course, boils the block completely, so it gets inside the crevices and shit where you can't get your hands. Now. Um, if the block is very nasty, dirty, then then yeah, then you de that's definitely important. But it, it usually speaking, generally speaking, uh, you, you know, your regular oil stained engines aren't going to be um, if, if the block has been taken care of properly, isn't going to be so bad where it makes a difference. So um, now, but the important thing is, is I can get the block so fucking clean that the machine shop was willing to take it without having forcing me to do the hot taking, which is great. Um, so still say the hot tank beats me, but at this point it doesn't beat me by fucking much. And, uh, that'll be something I can add to my labor, like where I can offer the cleaning. It'll be half the price, uh, a little bit less than half the price of the machine shop. The machine shop's only 85, I'll do for 40. But it will be something that's, you know, that's charged because it is still labor. It's still something I have to take my time to do. <sighs> All right, so I guess the last thing is, the last bit of news is for those of you that are actually waiting for this and care about this, is, uh, is the podcast, um, uh, the first podcast is set to go. Uh, and Blake is going to be the guy I do the podcast with. Now, for a lot of you guys, you've heard this guy's name, and this will be your introduction to him. But for some of you OG guys, you or some of you guys that have actually watched my, um, my first startup for the Blake's Hatch, We'll have met Blake there. That I, I, you know, Blake was in the video there back a couple years ago when we had our, our little workspace together. So, um, yeah, uh, Blake, uh, the Blake's uh, doing the block podcast with Blake is the best way to go for the first one because we're already close friends. This is the closest friend I have down here, and, and generally speaking, the closest friend I have. Period. Right now, he's like the guy is like family to me. So, um, we, we, you know, we actually have, you know pretty long conversation as it begin with just bullshit so this time we'll be able to have a long conversation on on uh, on camera now it is going to have it's going to be focused right i do have specific talking points i've already talked to him to give him some time to think on it you know but um uh, i'm sure that if the if the podcast goes a little longer than what i explained it's going to be a minimum of 30 minutes and i think the 30 minutes is easily able to fill up with the amount of shit we have to talk about but if it goes longer than that that's fine because i, I want this to be a little bit free-flowing like I have my talking points, but if it uh, if it tends to it tends to expand and go all a little off topic, that's fine. Um, so I don't know. We're just gonna have to see how it goes. As far as how we're gonna do the, the uh, podcast, originally the idea was to live stream, but every single time I've ever live streamed, I have crashes. I have problems. Whether I use Wi-Fi, whether I use the cameras, or uh, whether I use uh, the network for the cell phone. It always crashes eventually at some point in time, and I don't want to lose five ten minutes of broadcasting time because of the crash. Uh, plus, you know, like that, you know, the originally I was going to do the live live uh, live podcast simply because not because I was going to interact with you guys because that wasn't going to be the case. Wow, that was fucking aggravating. So, um, 
a uh, scam likely hit me and fucking cut my broadcast off. I'm going to have to put my shit on airplane mode. I, it's been a while since I've done that, but I'm going to go back to doing that. Airplane mode for while I'm filming from now on. Holy fucking shit, man. That is aggravating. Now i got to fucking cut and edit this shit together to fucking upload it. Anyway, the podcast will be um, uh, will be uh, Sunday, Sunday night. So it'll be my normal upload time. It's not going to be during the day. I'm going to upload probably around like 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Depending on, you know, it just depends on how things go down. Um... But, uh, yeah, so the whole idea is to do the podcast with Blake, who I'm comfortable with, who's comfortable with me already, you know, who knows me already, so we can get this idea, uh, we can get it out here, and then I can use this to show the other people I'm going to invite. <laughs> it's like, hey, look, this is what the podcast is. This is the same thing I'm going to do for everybody, and then hopefully it evolves into something from now. Uh, whether I'm going to, uh, is now, I guess the other thing that might be a question is, am I going to make a separate channel for podcasting? No. Because I don't expect to have more than like 100 to 150 views for the for the podcast, to be, uh, to be honest. Now, if I get up to 200, 300, that'd be fucking awesome. That's generally what my normal viewership is. But like I said, I don't really expect it to be that way right away because the fact that this podcast is not, well, it's going to be car related, but it's not my normal thing, right? So uh, I figure I'll do that, for, I'll do that for a while. And then, of course, eventually, hopefully the podcast grows from there. And, you know, like I said the other day, I would like to have, you know, bigger and bigger names as time goes by, as, you know, I get more people that, I, you know, I would like to have some of the guys from the local shops, you know, some of them, even possibly eventually the local tuners, uh, to have, I for have an idea, you know, Genesis again from, uh, like, from Eddie, Auto, uh, Eddie from Genesis Automotive, it would be somebody I would love to have on here, somebody I've had conversations with plenty of times who I think has a lot of insight for the business world, I think would be, you know, fun to talk about. Um, Lee, who's, who's tuned a couple of my cars before, um, and eventually maybe even Javi. Javi seems like a friendly enough dude. I think that if I gain enough traction, you know, it can get there. So now for those of you guys that are thinking, oh, big names, that that's, not, you know, big local names, it's not going to happen right away. I need to build a viewership. I need to build an audience because I need to be able to show these guys, you know, hey, look, this is something worth doing. Um... So that uh, I wouldn't expect right away, but I do have, like I said, if you watch the IGTV version of this, we talk about the podcast. I do have like you know five or six people, you know, well five now, not counting Blake, that I could talk to that I, you know that I could bring in. And uh, yeah, so I, hopefully it'll, it'll just go from there, and then hopefully more of you guys that do live in South Florida that are watching, you know, yeah, you can you know, chime in or whatnot. This doesn't have to be anybody uh, important. This can be just your average old dude that has. Uh, something to talk about with cars just like you know just like I started now, I'm, I was nobody important for a very long time and I wouldn't really say I'm somebody important now although I'm not a nobody as that's not the case so this is hopefully you know a step in, the, in a direction that will uh, expand from here and I'm also because uh, I do I have figured out how I'm gonna set my shit up I have a foldable plastic table this uh, you know one of those skinny Walmart tables you can get I'm gonna put that in my living room I can move some shit around uh, and I have good lighting in there and I can put the podcast right at the end of the, uh, not the podcast, but I can put the camera right at the end of the table. So it's within reach still. So that means it's easy to pick up the sound, but still able to film us both, right? And uh, there's, there's that. And then I guess for a while, I'm willing to uh, even travel to do this. Like if you got a spot, like I can come to you for the podcast. If it uh, just that way, it makes things easier at first until eventually I get to a place where I can expand or hopefully eventually I, within the next year or two, I can get to a place where I have a shop. Um, as far as scheduling goes, I would like to do this at least once a week, um, no less than twice a month. But uh, it, because we're starting now, I need to get this out here. You know, hey, look, this is what the podcast is. Watch my first podcast, you, so that way you can expect what it's going to be. Do you want to do this? And then we go from there. Um, I guess after after uh, Sunday, when I do the first podcast, then it's going to start reaching out to people, and I will start reaching out to multiple people at the same time, and then we can start working out a schedule. Hopefully, people will agree to do this. I don't see why anybody wouldn't, but yeah, uh, so we'll see where we go to from there. All right, guys, so thanks for watching, and uh, oh, man, see, my, my brain is too fucking small to keep all the shit that I would love to tell you guys at the end of every fucking video, but um, just, you know, social media links are in the, in the description. Please, guys, don't fucking hit me up with asking me, you know, ask my permission to ask questions. That's a good way to get ignored. I fucking hate that. It seems like a shitty, cheap way to try and start a conversation so you can catch me in one. Just ask whatever questions you have to ask me. Ask it in totality, and when I can, I'll get to you. Everybody gets at least read. If I'm reading you and I'm not answering your questions because it's really basic and you can find it on the channel. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and peace.